I'm delighted to welcome you all on this uh, virtual tour of the University of Pennsylvania Perlman School of Medicine uh, Udall uh, Center of Excellence for Parkinson's Disease. We've been a Parkinson's Disease Udall Center since about 2007. As you'll hear, we have a number of cores uh, that support the four projects in the Udall Center. And I'm pleased to say that it's a nice balance between patient-oriented studies and uh, animal modeling and cell culture modeling of Parkinson's disease. The focus, uh, as you will hear, is the non-motor symptoms uh, of Parkinson's disease, which are very important. About 80% of Parkinson patients will, over time, uh, for example, develop a cognitive impairment that's severe enough to be termed dementia. First, I'd like you to stretch out your arms as far as you can and just hold them up. And the patients uh, come to us through the clinical core, which is located at Pennsylvania Hospital. I'm a neurologist at Pennsylvania Hospital and the director of the clinical core for the Udall Center. The patient care aspect of our program is built around our Parkinson's Disease and Movement Disorder Center. And because we have a large patient population of people with Parkinson's disease, it was a natural for us to have this marriage of basic science and clinical science come together to create the Udall program. When the patients come to see us and we select them from our large pool of patients at the center, they undergo a number of tests that look at cognitive function. They also are tested for the physical aspect of Parkinson's disease to make sure that the diagnosis is correct. In my role as principal investigator of Core B of the Udall Center, I'm responsible for ensuring that recruitment goals are maintained. Since the inception of the Penn Udall Center approximately eight years ago, there have been a total of about 330 participants in Core B. These are people that are seen annually for cognitive assessments and clinical assessments. A particular focus of our Udall Center is biomarkers which is the collection of blood, examination of plasma levels of proteins and genetics, the collection of cerebral spinal fluid, and also obtaining structural and functional magnetic resonance imaging pictures of the brain to help determine what are the biomarkers that predict cognitive decline and impairment in Parkinson's disease patients. There are now a total of eight support groups in the Philadelphia region, including newly started support groups in Northeast Philadelphia, West Philadelphia, and Chinatown to serve previously underserved populations. I am the project leader for our Udall Programs Project One. Project One is all about whether we can take existing information from both clinical information, genetic information, proteins you can measure in people's blood or CSF, and images you can take of their brains, and you can sort of see if there are subgroups of people with particular trajectories in Parkinson's disease. We just finished recruiting the first half of the people in the project, which is 75 people. And I just met with my student, and he was showing me some really cool data, because with the first half, we're seeing super great separation of people who have dementia with Parkinson's disease and people who don't. I think like we could you know, tell using these markers who belonged with each group kind of at an accuracy of about 90%. I'm the uh uh, PI of Project 2 and the Udall grant. We've focused on a couple of specific projects. One project is concerned with the ability to appreciate what others are thinking about as we're talking with them. So we try to adjust what we're saying in order to make sure that we're communicating effectively. We have another study that's looking at narrative organization. We're also looking at the neuroanatomic basis for these difficulties. One way that we're doing this is that we're using imaging studies to try to help us understand them which parts of the brain during life are contributing to some of these difficulties that folks with Parkinson's disease encounter. I am a researcher in the Udall Center working with Murray Grossman. My research focuses on neuroimaging biomarkers of Parkinson's disease and associated diseases. When a physician looks at an MRI image in the clinic it can be difficult to visually determine a part of the brain that's affected by Parkinson's disease. But what we can do by using quantitative markers of neuroimaging is that we can compare uh, quantitatively the images of Parkinson's disease patients relative to healthy controls, and then we can determine which areas of the brain are affected by disease, and then how to monitor those brain areas over time. I'm part of the neuropathology 
biomarkers and genetic score. What I do is I'm involved with a brain donation program. So patients who are followed in the clinical core are consented for autopsy. We do a postmortem examination of the brain, look under the microscope for the characteristic lesions that we see in Parkinson's disease, uh, which are called Lewy bodies. Um, something unique to Penn, we also look for the inclusion seen in other neurodegenerative diseases, so Alzheimer's disease, um, ALS, frontotemporal degeneration, because what we realize now is that Parkinson's is really a whole brain disease where we're seeing many diverse pathologies in the same brain. I oversee the genetics component of the neuropathology biomarker and genetics core. Our role is to collect and bank DNA samples from participants and in some cases their family members. We perform a variety of genetic tests such as SNP genotyping and next generation sequencing to identify genetic risk factors and hereditary mutations. This genetic information is used by the Udall cores and projects in order to enable a personalized medicine approach to studies of the diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment of Parkinson's disease. I lead the database biostatistics and bioinformatics core here at the Udall Center. We provide expertise in biostatistics to all cores and projects of the Udall Center. This involves study design guidance and optimal sample size determinations of research studies. An important mission of our core is to provide statistical training to the next generation physician scientists, neuropathologists, genetics, biostatisticians, and bioinformaticians. I'm a co-investigator of the core of uh, database biostatistics and bioinformatics. Bioinformatics is getting more and more importance in uh, translational research. There are great opportunities, but also uh, many challenges. But I think the most important challenge is how to work with the clinical scientists and translate biomedical research questions into mathematics, statistics, and computer programs so we get meaningful results. One other important challenge is how to provide high quality data for the researchers at the center and other collaborators to uh, do analysis. And that's a really important task. And Ray Tong, who's the leader of data management, has been doing a great work on this. The INDD is unique because we have studies and samples from the entire neuro neurodegenerative disease spectrum. In this database, we have several pieces of data, including clinical data, pathological data, biomarker data, genetics data and imaging data. The goals of Project 3 are to develop cell culture models for Lewy body pathology. Basically, what we've done is that we were able to trick neurons that uh, we culture in the dish and to develop Lewy body merely by just adding a small amount of synthetic synuclein fibers that now allow us to take the model for high throughput screening of drugs that can potentially inhibit Lewy body formation. But more importantly, and we collaborated with Project 4 to really try to develop the best animal model for Parkinson's disease. We took basically regular mice, was able to, through manipulation, to show that we can get Lewy body formation in these, the brain of these mice, and also that the pathology spread to other parts of the brain. This observation, which we made about two years ago now, was repeated and by other laboratories in rats and also in monkeys. And I really think that this type of models, is they are transformative in the sense that they allow us now to really identify, use them to identify treatment for Parkinson's disease. Kelvin and I are the investigators in Project 4, which focuses on the transmission of alpha-synuclein pathology. This sets the stage also for new approaches to therapy. We're right now actively testing whether by stopping these uh, protein, these uh, abnormal proteins, we are able to alleviate the disease. I'm chair of the neurology department at the Perlman School of Medicine here at the University of Pennsylvania. I think the Penn Udall Center is an example of what we need to do a lot more of across the department. It's a wonderful uh, collaborative group 
that is interdisciplinary, that are actually working both at the clinical end to serve patients, but also advance research and connect very deeply back to basic researchers at the bench. I'm the Chair of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. To accomplish anything in translational research, it's really not about the individual, it's about the team. It really does take a village to make a difference uh, in these complicated disorders. You need basic scientists, you need clinicians, you need data processing people, you need the ability to collate lots of information. And I think that's really the genius of what John and Virginia are doing with the center here at Penn Medicine. There are approximately 1.5 million Americans who uh, are living with Parkinson's disease, and the numbers will certainly grow in the coming decades. The cost of Parkinson's disease right now is $25 billion. We need a public-private partnership. We need to work with all of you as advocates, as participants in our studies. Your financial support is also so important. I'd like to thank you very, very much for joining us on this virtual tour. I hope you learned a lot of new things about Parkinson's disease. Again, thank you very much.